All right, welcome back. Uh, this is another quick session, uh, finishing up this chat UI React project that I was working on yesterday. Um, so I finished it. This is now running in React. Um, you'll have to take my word for it, I suppose, but uh, you know, hello, please write me a poem about React. Um, it's got, you know, it's got the thinking state. Uh, it will hopefully, when it comes back with an answer, uh, automatically update here. Um, I guess uh, I should have given it an easier task than writing a poem. Sometimes these things can be a little bit slow. There it goes. Um, new lines, I haven't gotten the new lines working. Um, I haven't actually even tried doing that. Um, but uh, yeah, so it works. Um, and I, I wasn't able to live code this because uh, I was so kind of rusty and floundering around that it wouldn't have been for, um, even by my standards, it would have been pretty uh, painful to watch how uh, much I had to Google around and read docs and get help from GPT to make this thing work. But I thought I would at least um, not leave you hanging and walk through what I've done. Um, so on the server side, it ended up mapping um, pretty nicely to what I had done originally. Um, so these are the HTMX views. You have kind of the single chat, the post API where you post a new message, and then the sort of polling UI where you wait for the response. Uh, that's while it's thinking. And I ended up having to build analogs for um, <clears throat> each of these things in React. So this one we saw last time, um, you just get the chat pass it to the template. Um, this template hasn't changed too much. Um, <clears throat> basically just rendering all that React stuff in this div. I had to pass the chat data, which I was doing before, and also the API URLs. And that's so, um, so that React can uh, know which URLs. I, I passed the URLs from Django to React rather than um, hard code them in two places. Uh, so uh, basically Django passes React to the URLs and React will use those to know what to do when you um, want to go talk to the server. So that's the review part. Um, now we can look at the new chat message API. Um, <clears throat> and so this I used kind of a normal DRF create model mixin, which is a, uh, a view that they ship with that lets you create models. Um, it's attached to the chat message serializer, which we saw yet last time. Um, <clears throat> the query set filters by um, the logged in user so that we can't do anything with anybody else's messages. And when we post to that API, uh, we get the chat out, we filter by the user uh, to make sure again that um, the user has permission to modify that chat. Um, I didn't know if there was a better way to do this with class-based views, but we kind of set some data on the post function. And then um, the post calls this create function, which in DRF uh, then ends up calling this perform create function. The only interesting thing here really is um, after we save the message model, we also want to do the async processing. So we um, call our celery task to get the chat GPT response. And if it's the first message of the chat, we also call um, a little task that sets the chat name. Uh, so like if we go back now to this thing I was just doing, um, you can see like write poem about React was what it used. Um, and it does that, uh, yeah, so this is the non-React version, which has the nice new lines. But if we add React, then we'll see the, um, the worst one. Um, but it, it takes this thing and it asks, um, open AI to summarize it and then um, uses that. So you can write like a really long prompt and, uh, and uh, it will condense that down into like a little title. So that was just kind of a fun little thing I was doing. We can look at that quickly. Um, basically, I say, um, you are summary bot and, you know, summarize this input and turn it into um, chat title and save it there. So that is how the um, posting messages work. And I can just show quickly the React side of that, um, which happens kind of in the input bar, though not really. So the input bar, just um, when you click uh, 
send. It calls props.send message, which you pass in, and, and it also handles the key press enter. Um, props.send message uh, gets passed in by the main chat application, and it goes to the send message wrapper, um, which gets the chat URL from this context that we passed in. Um, that's what I was just talking about. And then calls this send message API function, which just does a, um, <clears throat> It creates a little serialized version of the message. I didn't use an API client for this. I could have, um, but it was simple enough. And I wasn't sure when I started whether I was going to use kind of like a standard DRF thing. So I just I just kind of create my own serialized version of a message, which has the chat ID, the message type, and the content. And then I call the API URL with the fetch API. Um, you have to do some CSRF stuff. Uh, for Django CSRF, CSRF protection, you pass the JSON message data, and then um, it does a callback uh, in order to update the um, update the UI. And so in that callback, and now we'll get into kind of the the next um, piece of functionality. Um, one of the things, oh yeah, the other little interesting bit that I had to figure out was. Um, in this API response, once we um, once we call out to the Chat GPT API, we need to get the task ID from Celery in order to be able to pull um, that particular task and find out whether or not it's finished running. Um, so we kind of just uh, monkey patch that task ID into the API response um, so that in the um, Callback here, we can set the task on the model. Um, we can add the message to the message list. We clear the input. Um, and then separately above here, there's this use effect thing, which in React is uh, how you kind of trigger an action on a state change. So um, whenever current task ID changes, which, which will be once we uh, get the API response back with the task, um, it will check if there is a task, and then it goes and hits this other server URL, URL to um, find out if the, uh, if the task is finished running. And if the task is finished running, um, we'll add the response to uh, the list of messages, and then we null out the task so that it stops um, polling. Otherwise, it uh, will continue to pull every second, um, just kind of calling itself until it gets something back. The error handling is pretty bad. Um, that's still kind of a to-do. Um, so we can look at the server-side version of this, um, the, sorry, the server-side implementation of this task view. And it's, it's very similar to, oops, very similar to the one we had up above here. Um, <clears throat> so here we were just getting the chat out mostly as a permission check. We get the progress from the Celery library, and then we get the info and pass it to the template. And similarly here, um, we get the progress out. And instead of passing it via a template, we just pass it as its sort of raw JSON representation, which has a bunch of this, a bunch of sort of like metadata about the task, including uh, including in the results object a um, the message. So yeah, that's basically uh, all that I had to do. It's I probably explained that pretty quickly. Um, and uh, it took me much longer than that explanation to piece it all together and to, to write it all out. Um, but yeah, that's basically how it works. I'm pretty pleased with how um, how it came together. Building this thing in React was was a pretty nice experience. Um, different pros and cons to HTMX. I I, um, I kind of like both of them for different things and, and get frustrated by both of them in different ways. But um, anyway, that is the um, all that I wanted to say today. Uh, 
so 150 something lines of um, React application code. Again, I probably should have like split this out into different files and, and whatever else. Um, like I said, my, my JavaScript uh, best practices are a little rusty and um, I'm much more comfortable in the Python world. But uh, it works and it's not terribly ugly. Um, this, this video was kind of an experiment. Let me know if uh, it was interesting or useful or uh, the sort of live coding figuring it out as I go version is better. Um, I probably wouldn't have normally published something like this, but uh, I kind of got halfway on the last one and didn't want to um, leave a loose thread. So this should all be in Pegasus probably almost by the time you see this. Uh, so if you want to get all this code and play with it yourself um, and you know start building something that is a ChatGPT clone or off of ChatGPT, um, that will or is available now. Cool, thanks for watching.